good spring break? Yeah. That's good. Um, all right, so let's get started. So last week, or the week before um, spring break, when we met, we talked about drywall. So I'm going to go ahead and bring up some pictures of the drywall, and we'll start from there. Let me share my screen with you. Okay. Don't look at me, honey. So last week we saw the drywall, how it was put in the house, how it was put over the wood studs, and there's insulation inside. And if you guys remember, the drywall is made out of, um, it's got paper on the outside, and in the middle is um, a cement-like material. And drywall is used to cover the walls for a couple different reasons. One, it's lightweight, so it's easy for workers to install. Two, it's fire-resistant, so you don't have to worry about your walls burning down. And... Um, Yes, it's just a really good building material, and it comes in boards, and you can see that um, they go ahead and they nail it to the wall every, um, looks like every like 12 inches or so, okay, and you see the seams, this is each a different board. So this saw last week, they went ahead and put in uh, the drywall boards throughout the home. Then, the next thing that happens is they have to finish the walls, so that way they, um, they look like how you guys see them in your house. So they have to cover all the seams and all these little holes, and they want to make the walls nice and smooth. So that's what they did this week. So, what they do is they put a tape over the seams, and they cover it with, like, a... Um, a plastic, uh, with like a plaster type material over it to kind of seal all the seams. So you can see this is one board, this is another board, this is a wall corner, and they go ahead and they seal all the seams. And this is the material that they use to cover it so that way it's nice and smooth, and they mix that together. You can see here they're mixing it, and I'll show you a video of it in a moment. And you can see this is kind of what the walls look like because. They have covered up all the different uh, screw holes and all the different seams, and they sand it down and make it nice and smooth. They also, wherever there's a corner, they nail um, what's called a corner bead, and this makes it so the corners are nice and square, or sometimes they're rounded. So this is a ceiling here. These are walls. No question yet, please. And this is a close-up of what the corner beads look like. So they go in the corners of the wall, so that way the corners are nice and smooth. Well, you just said more. Okay. Now, I'm going to go ahead and show you a quick video so you can see them doing it in action. Watch this. Making the walls. Don't watch me. <laughs> Now, if you guys remember, when you saw Richard, he went ahead and he was on stilts when he was doing um, the framing. This guy could use stilts, but he doesn't like wearing stilts, so he goes on this little... Um, this little tray here, and he kind of shimmies his hips back and forth and moves it along the wall. That's how he reaches the ceiling. And you'll see someone else uses stilts, someone uses a ladder. So there's a lot of different techniques for them to reach the ceiling. But um, this particular guy, he doesn't like wearing stilts. So this is what he does to nail in the corner bead um, on the ceiling. <laughs> Oh, look how that moves. Oh, 
Now, in order to reach the seams in the ceiling, he also is standing on like a little platform. And you can see he's got the putty. He's going to smear the putty on um, the seams. And then he's also got a contraption that he's going to use that applies it to the seams. So that little contraption that you saw, what that does is it mixes the tape with the putty so that way it gets on the seam nice and evenly and then he scrapes off the excess so it's nice and smooth and he puts it in his little tray so that way it doesn't, um, the excess putty doesn't get everywhere. So you can see this, this is the putty that they use um, that the, they were just applying to the walls and it's very thick so he has to mix it up with this special tool. Still yeah, this guy, he decided he wanted to wear stilts. He thought it was easier. The other guy didn't want to, but you can see he's wearing a stilt. Okay. Now... The next step is, let me go back to my pictures, after all the walls are nice and smooth, you see here you can't really see the seams anymore except for where, you see the white, but you can't really feel where the seams are. Everything's all smoothed out, it's all sanded, they've covered all the little nails and all the different wall joints. You see the corners are nice and smooth. The next thing that they have to do is they put texture on the wall. So in order to put the texture on the wall, they're actually going to spray it. So they have to cover all the windows and doors with plastic to make sure that the spray doesn't get on the windows and doors. Okay, so they, they tape it up and they put this plastic covering. And then what they do is, show you the video here. They spray the texture on the wall. It's a texture, so sometimes your walls are bumpy. Yes, yeah, so this is not paint. This is a texture, and I'll show you a picture close up. It's so that the wall, it kind of, it's more for a decorative looks like. Some people don't want their walls smooth, um, so it has like a little um, bump to it. So he's applying the texture on with the spray gun. Now, after he sprays the texture, what they do is they go ahead and they knock it down to give it a, an additional, like it kind of smooths out the texture a bit. 
So they go ahead and take, um, they're kind of like plastic brooms, and they wipe the walls and the ceilings to give it a knockdown look. And that's the name of this particular texture. It's called knockdown texture. There's different types that you can put on the walls. He just realized he was on camera. <laughs> oh, and you see that he's selling to you. Oh, my God, what a room. And then I'll show you what it looks like afterwards. Now, um, it's very important they keep all the windows covered up and all doors because that spray, when they spray it, it really gets everywhere. Now, this is kind of like a close up of the texture, so you can see this is how it looks before it's painted, like a little spackle. And this is the machine that the texture comes out of, which is outside. So it goes through this hose. Okay? So at this point, the walls are all textured. Now the next step that happens is, and I wasn't there to actually take pictures while they were doing it, but I got pictures afterwards. After the walls are textured, they go ahead and put in all the trim. So what is trim? The trim is all the moldings and all the doors. They went ahead and sold all the doors. They put in all the moldings. They put in crown molding. Base molding. Um, you see here some doors and moldings and sills. Now the reason why they put that these in now is because the next step is the house is going to be painted. So they want to paint them at the same time. And uh, these different moldings, they come in different like shapes and patterns. And so we, um, and, and they come in large sticks. And the guys, they cut down the sticks to the correct size and they nail them to the walls. Now, after this is done, the next step is they come and they paint. Before they paint, they have to make sure they seal all the gaps where all the trim meets the wall. So behind this molding here and this wall, there might be a little small gap. So they take this caulk gun, which is kind of like a glue almost, and they fill in the gap. They also fill in the gaps wherever they nailed in to um, the walls, they fill in all the little nail holes with little wood putty. And this here, this um, is what mixes, it takes the paint and it puts it into, you'll see there's like a paint sprayer that they use. So most of you guys probably think that the walls are rolled on with paint, but our walls are actually, they're sprayed on, which is a little bit faster. And it's something you can do because there's no furniture in the house yet. So they don't have to worry about getting the paint on your floors or your furniture. So they could go ahead and just spray it on. And I got a little video so you can see that. So you can see he just sprays on the paint. He's got a covering mask to protect so he, he doesn't like inhale any of the paint things all day long. And um, they go ahead and they paint the walls and ceilings and they go ahead and they paint all the moldings next. Now in our particular homes, the walls are painted one color. You can see it's kind of like a, um, a peach. The ceiling is painted a little bit lighter color to give it some height and the moldings are all painted white. Now they'll come back later with a paintbrush and they'll cut in all the edges so that way you've got perfectly straight um, straight lines from the different color paints. But for now they just kind of oversprayed it to get it done really fast. And they did all of this in a day. You can see here they painted the doors, the walls. And uh, yeah, it looks different from when it's just sticks, and you guys saw it from when there's just dirt on the ground. So it's really starting to look like a house.
house now. And that's where we are today. Um, we've got the next things that they're going to be working on the house, which I'll show you guys next week, is um, they're going to be installing the tile floors. And then the outside of the house is going to get stucco, and that'll be painted as well. Well, Lori, oh, we have some okay. questions. All right. She loves the questions. Mm -hmm. Why don't the people who spray the texture wear maxes? Um, why don't the people that spray the exterior wear masks? Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, they didn't paint the outside of the house yet, and uh, they probably don't need to wear masks on the outside because there's lots of fresh air around, so they don't have to worry about the fumes yeah. coming. Yeah, the, texture, the texture on the walls. She didn't oh, see it. The, texture, the texture, I don't think, has, is as fumey as the paint. The paint has, like, more gas in the air, whereas the texture is, like, almost like a putty that gets, like, thrown on the wall. So but they do have to, it does get all over their clothes. So they have to make sure that, you know, they're wearing, you know, old clothes. They don't mind getting dirty. Um, does the guy that, when he puts on the texture, when he does, when he's doing it on the ceiling, does he get tired? Um, well, yeah, I'm sure sometimes his arms get tired, and they do take lunch breaks, but I'm sure because he does it every day, he's got some nice muscles in his arms, so that way it helps him uh, go ahead and keep, you know, the machines up and the brooms going all day long. Do you have a picture of the family who's going to be living in the house, your house? Um, I don't have a picture, but when the house is finished, which is going to be um, in just about a month, the family who's going to be moving in, they made a little um, video message for you guys, so you'll be able to go ahead and see and see them and hear what they have to say. Yeah. 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 Hi, my name is Skylar. When do you have to have the house that you're working on now done by? When do you have to have it done by? Was that the question? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's a great question. Well, when the people, the family who bought this home, we signed a contract with them and we picked the date that we both agreed um, would be the date that the home would be finished and they can move in. So we actually picked the j date was for... July, June or July, but because the home was moving along so quickly, um, we actually called them and we decided to move the date up closer. So they're going to be actually moving into the home in the middle of May. And do you already have another plan for another house you're going to build? What was that? I couldn't hear. Do you have another plan for a house you're going to build? That's a great question. Yeah, we actually have a lot of different floor plans. I think we have maybe like 20 different floor plans. And right now in our community that we're building, there's actually like 15 homes that are being built, different floor plans right now. And they're all in different stages of construction. So we've got a lot of different plans, um, and they're all, you know, under different stages right now. So, Lori, if they go to scoble.com or scoble, scoble Homes right over there on, and, and Google it, then you can click on to their website. Yeah, I can actually show you um, how, where they can see different plans. Um, let me just pull out the website over here. So this is our website, and if you go here to Inventory Homes, you see these are all the different homes that we have that are under construction right now. Wait a minute, Lori, we don't see it yet. Let me know when you see it. Yeah, yeah I'm sorry. Okay, so here's our website, yeah. Sobel.com, and if you go here, to inventory homes, you can see these are all the homes that we have under construction right now. Okay? The ones that are sold are the ones that people have already bought.
Right, so those are under construction. The other ones that have a price and they have the completion date when the home will be finished. So you can see in our different communities, we have a lot of homes and a lot of different floor plans. Then you can actually click on the home and you can see the floor plan and the picture of what it'll look like when it's finished. So you can show that to your family. Cool. Go that ahead. Is cool. And I'll show you the one that we're built. The one that you guys are following right now is um let's see. It's in Little Oak Plantation. It's the Michelangelo on lot 25. So you can see Michelangelo. So this is the one that we're building right now. That you guys are watching. Yeah. Really big house. Really big house. Okay. Now, Louisa? Cool. Question else? Do they wear protective gear to put put the texture on the wall? That's a good question. Um, the texture, no, they don't wear any protect, protective gear because they're just kind of spraying, like, the potty on the wall. But they do um, want to make sure they wear, you know, like, long jeans, and like covered close because they don't want it to get on their skin. That might hurt if they, you know they're trying to scrub it off after it dries. And also they want to make sure they're not wearing any nice clothes that'll get ruined by by the texture. Um, how do you install the light switches? Okay, that's a great question. Um, well. You guys saw a couple weeks ago the electricians came and they put all the wires in the wall. And now what you see is in the drywall there's there's openings. So the drywallers, they actually cut holes in the boards to make sure that they can get to the switches. And then a little bit later on you'll see the electricians will come back and they'll go ahead and put those plastic plates with the switches and connect the wires to them so that way you can go ahead and have a switch turn it on and off. But right now, and I think I could show you a picture, it's just, um, you can see it's just openings in the wall. There's little holes. Um, let me get a close-up one for you. You can see here there's like an opening in the wall. That's where there's going to be like an outlet or a switch. So you see all these openings here are going to be outlets and switches. And right now they're just little holes, but inside are, those holes are wires. It's a little bit hard to see the wires, but they're in there. The electricians will connect the wires to the plastic coverings um, a little bit later on. And right now, the um, and then later on the electricity will be turned on to the house, and then all the switches will work. So right now there's no electricity in the house, and they're getting electricity from an outside source. That's correct, yeah. There's, what there is, is outside there's a temporary power box, so it's a temporary box that has electricity that they can go ahead and plug in their different tools to. Eloise, you have one more question? Yeah. How heavy is the, ma is the machine that carries the texture? Oh, that's a good question. How heavy is the machine that carries the texture? Was that what you asked? Outside, right? Isn't it the one outside? Or the one the man's holding? The one the guy's holding, I actually didn't pick it up, but if I had to guess, I would say maybe it was like five pounds. Um, and the actual machine outside that has all the texture stuff inside of it that's like mixing, that's really heavy, and that has to be brought over on a truck. So um, I don't know exactly how much that weighs, but it's definitely too heavy for anyone's pickup. It's on wheels, right? Yeah. Any last questions? Lori, what are we doing next week? So next week, um, you'll, you'll be able to see the stucco on the outside of the house start to be applied. And also inside, they're going to be putting in the tile flooring. Oh, tile flooring. So how many of you have tile in your house on the floor? Cool. We've been looking at um, tiles and looking at uh, as a, with geometry and looking at the shapes of the tiles as we uh, learn that too. So it'll be interesting what type of tile you guys you guys will learn. There's a lot of math and geometry that comes into installing the tile because they want to make sure it's even. And you know the tiles are certain sizes. They're maybe like 16 inches, but you got to make sure that 
it fits in the room. You don't want any tiny, thin little pieces of tile around the edges. So there's a lot of math involved with that. We'll definitely talk about that. Cool. All right, so we look forward to that class, right, next week? Yeah. All right, Lori. So uh, keep you posted. And uh, thanks. Everyone say goodbye to Lori. Bye. Bye, guys. Have a good weekend. I'll call you later, Lori. Okay, bye. bye.